So everybody say welcome to our Monday night shiur. Our shiur today is the Inun Yishmat uh, Ben Porat Chai Ben Adina and Shlomo Ben Chifra and also to our anonymous sponsor. Uh, may Hashem bless all of you guys. Be bracha v'atzlacha and all the neshamot that we mentioned. Yanuchu mishkivotam bo'olamot elyonim b'zot Hashem itbayach yisiyi Inun Yishmatam. And our shiur should also be the Inun Yishmat all our chayalim that are in uh, Aza right now. And um, Hashem should save them from all the mechablim. And I just want to let you guys know, in Oferet Yitzukah, in Operation Cast Lead, I don't remember what year it was in, 2009, 10, whatever. And the Jews were blowing up as soon as they hit a house. And Baruch Hashem, right now, they learned their Shigaon, where they put their traps and everything. And, you know, compared to them, we only have, as the start of the war, 30, 40 casualties. And they, they claim they have 10,000. Of course, it's fake. But they, but they have, obviously, a couple of thousand casualties. Listen, I say that word very loosely. And, um, but still, the Gemara says a story. When the Jews under Yahushua bin Nun came to Eretz Yisrael, so Yahushua split the yard in. Right? People think Moshe split the sea, the Reed Sea, not the Red Sea. Remember that, the Reed Sea. And uh, wow, what a miracle. Yoshua also split a, wa- a body of water. He split the Jordan River. Whatever Moshe did, Moshe Rabbeinu, Yoshua Abinun did. But in a smaller uh, version. And uh, he split the Jordan River. And when he got into Eretz Yisrael, the first city that he, Yahushua, was almost 90 years old at that time, never married. No, he wasn't married. He never had kids. He was sold, how you say, sold to Moshe Rabbeinu. He did after. After. He was so sold to Moshe Rabbeinu, he couldn't, uh, how you say, he couldn't separate. He was like, you know, as the Gemara says, if you're so, if you love Torah so much like Ben Azai, you're patur from Kerevia. So Yoshua was na'ar lo yamish mitocha ol. We're going to talk about that word today. I spoke about this last year, and I think two years ago too. I'm going to say it again. The word na'ar. Na'ar. Okay? He was a na'ar lo yamish mitocha ol. He was a young lad that did not move from the ohel, and he couldn't get married. And when he came into Eretz Yisrael, uh, the girl that he married, after he destroyed the first stronghold, the first fort in Yericho, Jericho was Rachav Azona. The Gemara in Megillah says she was the top four or five most beautiful women that ever lived, but she was as, Levi. right? No. Levi, at least before she converted. And, and he only had girls from her. He didn't have boys. When you marry for beauty, you don't have boys. You only marry, you only get girls. You know that. Not that he married for beauty. I'm just letting you know. That's what it says in the Gemara Ishaki Tazria Vyarda Zachar. When a woman is Mazria, then she's Molid Zachar. When a man is Mazria first, when he lets it first, then he'll have a Zachar. Then he'll have a Zachar. But if she will, she'll have a Nikeva. Right? So therefore, a person has to keep his priorities straight. But that's not the point right now. We want to know, Yoshua, he fought Yericho. <coughs> Yericho was the strongest city in Eretz Canaan. The strongest city. Nobody could break through those walls. <coughs> it was ironclad walls. He won. How? With shofars and hakafot. You guys know how we do hakafot. Oh, yeah, listen, soon you're going over there, but it should be a memory for you. <laughs> but uh, hakafot, that's all he did. Hakafot. Every day, for seven days, he did hakafot. On Shabbat, he did seven hakafot. <coughs> blew a couple of shofarot. Back then, Shofar was not Muktzeh. Shofar was only Muktzeh later on. It was Exer Chachamim. And the walls didn't fall. They sunk into the ground. It was a miracle. It's one thing if they fell. You guys say, that's an echo, this, that, you know. You can make up many things. But they sunk into the ground. And they found the ruins of the walls of Yericho. And they got in over there and they conquered. And Rachav Hazona became the wife of Yoshua Abinu. It doesn't say this in the Nevi'im. It's a Gemara. It's not written in the Nevi'im. It just says Yoshua let Rachav live. The Ariya Kadosh hints it. The Ramchal writes it. 
The Ramchal writes that Yoshua is Yosef and Rachav was the wife of Potiphar. So where she couldn't marry him in the previous Gilgul, now they're meant to be together. Listen, you're, you're meant to marry her, you're going to marry her anyways. Not in this reincarnation. But say they're in the next one. He came from Israel. Huh? He came from Israel. Who? Your, exactly. Not only that, Yoshua was Mishorish Nishmat Yosef. So you go to Gonshar Yulim, Hagdamad Amidvala, Amidzayin, you see it over there. The point is, is that everybody gets to where he has to be at the end of the day. And then Yoshua. Now, the next city they went to conquer was the city of Ai. Ai in Yud. Over there, 36 Jews died. 36. It was 36. In Simcha's Torah that happened three weeks ago, 1,400 plus died. Massacred, violated, abused, burnt to a crisp. Uh, what happened? What did the Jews say when 36 of them died? And the Gemara says it was really one guy who was equal to 36 men of the Sanhedrin. What happened? They said, listen, one of us died. We're leaving. We're, we give up. One of you died. It's a sign. If one of us die, it's a sign that this whole operation is done. Because we're already leaving it up to chance. No chance. Hashem is here. If Hashem killed one of us, it means that we're done. Because we're a group over here. Yeshua did fast. This, that. He made a goral. He found out what's the issue. I saw a clip. What do we see from here? That we have to understand that. We can't, we, we can't look at this. Any war that the Jewish people are in, we can't look at it as chance. As a coincidence. Every person that dies is a pagam on our side. It's a pagam on our side. And that's what I want to talk about to you guys today. What can we do to change the Ma'areche? Because I told you guys this last week, we don't believe in ourselves. We don't believe, we'll do it, but we don't believe that our Shofars are going to help. We don't believe that our Tehillim are going to help. We don't believe that our Hakafot are going to help. Because if we believed in it, we would do it 24-7. How could we not? Knowing that our brothers are out there, we'll give money. Money we believe in. Why? Because we see it. We feel it. We worked for it. We'll give it. We'll give Tzedakah. We'll give the tzedakah, but the, but the our avodah, we will, we don't believe in ourselves hundred percent. Before I'm gonna start, I want to read you this week's parasha. It's crazy how every parasha that we're going through right now, mamash, coincides to everything that's going on over here. Maybe not in the rate that we want it to coincide, because if it was in last week's parasha already, he kicked Ishmael out of the land. So, Aza is one of the cities of Eretz Yisrael. So they were already supposed to be kicked out. Now, in this week's parasha, it talks about what happened to Ishmael at the end. When so, I'm gonna bring you back to this to last week's parasha, Vayera. It says over there that Hashem tells uh, Avraham Avinu in Brit Ben Abitarim, and then later on, in when he tells him you're gonna have a kid, he's 99 years old. He just had a Brit Milah, and he already gets a revelation of Nevuah, full Nevuah. What's the difference between a nevua and a vision? Daniel has a lot of visions. In fact, the date of Mashiach is written in the book of Daniel. But we don't call him a Navi. And I heard this from a very big Rav in uh, Der Or Sameach of Breitowitz. He says, a nice pshat. I give many pshat on this before, but I'm going to give you his pshat. I like this pshat. He said, Daniel was a Navi too, but... Your whatever you're recording, which is the book of Daniel, what wasn't told by him by God to be recorded. God never told Daniel, write down whatever you saw. A prophet, what we call a Navi, is told by God, you must record it and relay the message. <clears throat> and we never see by Daniel that God tells him, record the message. And I said, it must mean that Daniel, even though he recorded whatever he saw, <clears throat> and it was very messianic, whatever he saw. Because remember, Daniel is living in the time of the Persians. He didn't even know who the Greeks were at that time. He didn't know who the Romans were at that time. And he writes about them clearly, clearly. And we have his writings in the time of the Geonim, in the time of the Tanaim, in the time of the Amoraim, and the, and, and the time of the Second Temple. They write about what Daniel said. It means whatever he said was true. Because he didn't, it's not a book that's written after the eras that he wrote about. Or else we would say it's a forgery. He wrote about it before. How do we know? He's quoted by people in the second temple. But God never told him to record it. Therefore, he's not a Navi. 
On the other hand, Ezekiel Yechezkel, which when he writes about the third temple, and remember when he was writing, he doesn't write, I'm writing you the dimensions of the third temple. He never writes that. He just writes you, I'm writing you the dimensions of the temple. Now the guys who are coming back from Haman's story, and they're building the second temple, we call it the second temple. But they didn't know that. What are they thinking? That Ezekiel's vision is them. They're thinking that Zerubbabel, he's the Mashiach. We know it in retrospect. We know it looking in hindsight that he's not the real Mashiach. But they don't know that. So that's why God tells Yechezkel, I'm telling you, write this in the name of God. This is the temple. He doesn't tell him the number. So we know this must happen. But Daniel is not something that's written in, God said, write it. He sees a vision and he knows that the vision is true. So he writes it down. The later Chachamim in the time of the Tanaim and Amoraim, they knew Beruach Kocham that this book belongs in the 24 books. So they added it in. Correct? Yes. But he didn't know that. He was writing this down because he woke up from a dream or he woke up from a vision and he's like, wow, it's true. I have to write this down. And we see that Daniel was a big tzaddik. He was thrown into a den of lions that were starved for a couple of days. And they were sitting around of him like Talmidim and he was teaching him Torah. I mean, this guy was, uh, Daniel was one of the 120 men of the great assembly. We have a interesting vision in the book of Daniel where he says, and I'm saying this in such uh, because, you know, I said this before this year to a couple of guys who were listening. It's been three weeks since the massacre, since the pogrom. And we all thought, you know, we grew up in America in the 90s, in the 80s, in the, in the, in the new millennium. We all thought that we were Neorim, that we're uh, evolved people, that we're smart people, that these things can't happen, that they will bake people in ovens, that they will violate and abuse women in front of their children, that they'll burn people alive, that they'll kill people that are just civil. We never thought it's such a thing. We thought this is something of the early, of the World War I era, World War II early. We thought this is the time of the jerk. One rabbi put it nicely. He said, education doesn't make you a moral person. Just because you're educated doesn't mean that you know what you're doing. Where is all the garbage coming out of today? From the colleges. Which colleges? The Ivy League colleges. Harvard, Cornell, Columbia. All the anti-Semitism. We call it anti-Semitism. I call it anti-Hashem. All the, all the, the anti-moral things are coming up from these educational institutions. There's, nobody says education makes you into a moral person. Fuck it. Opposite. It turns you into an immoral person. Because when you say that you as a human being know what's good, you're basically saying that what Hashem says is wrong, or what God says is wrong. And then also the other side, religion doesn't also make you a moral person. Because if religion made you a moral person, religion, then 2,000 years being under Esav in Europe and in other parts of the world, when they killed and butchered people in the name of JC, would make it a moral thing. And when they baked people this past Simchat Torah in the oven, that was also a moral thing because they did it in the name of Allah. So religion doesn't make you moral. Education doesn't make you moral. So what makes you moral? <laughs> Only Hashem. Opposite. Because they say they have Midot. We're for the underdog. We're voting for the underdog. Hamas is the underdog. Humanitarian rights. It's okay that they have... Uh, rockets shooting out of kindergartens. It's okay that it's coming out of a hospital. It's okay. They're the underdog. You have to root for the underdog. That's the moral thing to do. What does Hashem say to Shaul HaMelech? Timche et zecher Amalek, he tells him. God says to Shmuel, tell Shaul, go to Amalek. And tell Shaul, destroy every living being. Not only every living being, any animal, a dog, a cat, a mouse, doesn't matter. Whatever is there, wipe it out. What does Shaul do? He can't do it. He's a Jew. He just can't do it. He, 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 he let some things go. 
And he lost the melucha. He lost the kingship. He lost everything. Because Hashem said, you let him live, you know what's going to come out of that? Haman! About Victor Miller says something nice. I sent this video on the Hashem group. I hope you guys saw it. Right? You saw that video that I sent? No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Victor Miller was a man of his, of his time, and he, I would say even a prophet before his time. He said, he, lived, he was in Europe in 1939, in Yeshiva, in Slobodka. Don't think that the people in Europe didn't know what Hitler was doing. Just like today, the religious people see what's going on in their, I don't want to say the word, in their pants. But most of the world, most of the Jewish world in Europe, they, they said, we have power, we're in politics. We're good. This is his words. You see the video I, I posted? And he said, the, the Jews in the yeshiva, they cried out. They mamish, they cried out. They cried. They said, Hashem, save us. But guys, think about it for a second. We're just a drop in the sea of the Jewish world. We're, 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 we're mamish at tipa. The, the, the vast majority of us, unfortunately, do not think that there is an issue. They don't think, they think everything is okay. And he said, it happened before in history, in the time of Mordechai the Esther. The only difference was there was a leader, a good one. And the Ancheknes Nagdolah, he got up and he said, guys, we're in peril. When he saw Haman's decree, what did Haman's decree say? I will kill every Jew. I don't care what your political spectrum is. You're right, you're left, you're central. I will kill every single Jew. What did Mordechai do? Did he say, listen, my uh, niece is in the palace. We're good. He ripped his clothing. In the middle of the city. The Midrash says he was the general of Ahasuerus. He cried out. He says, guys, send to Esther. If you're not going to do something right now, you're going to die. Hashem is going to find salvation from somewhere else. But you got to do something now. He didn't sleep. He didn't say, listen, I have a house to build right now. And I have a couple of businesses to sell and uh, kids to go into college and I have kids to marry. He didn't say that. He said, now is the time of Etzara, he said. And he was Kharash Val Mazger. He was the head of the Ancheknes of the Olam, more than I, Bilshan. He said, now I got to do something. You know what Esther said? What can I do? I can't go into the king. Everybody knows it. If I go in front of the king, if I wasn't called to him, you know what's going to happen to me? You know how, how many women Ahasuerus had in his harem? You can't even count them. From every city, from every province, the most beautiful woman. You know what Ahasuerus did? You know how he would, how he would choose women in his harem? The girls would go into his, into, his, into his bedroom. They would take a year to get ready. Makeup. 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 Oil. In balsam oil. Wow. Everything to get ready. They would go in there. First, he would taste them, try them. After he would try them, he would say, mm, listen, uh, they belong in my harem or not. But the problem is that he, he tried it already. The king tried it. You can't go anywhere else. They would be Almanot Srurod. He had two harems. One for the woman he picked. One for the woman he said no to. You think they were free to go? They weren't free to go. Once you're, you were by the king, you were by the king. You only belong to the king, but you, it means you were alone for the rest of your life. You know how many harems this guy had? Ahasuerus? He was a, he was a Rasham Rushai. The Gemara says he was worse than Haman. Worse than Haman, Ahasuerus. And Esther comes in over there. Uh, Mordechai tells Esther, listen, you went in over there against your will, against your will. Who says this is the reason you're supposed to go in? But Esther said, listen, just because I was chosen doesn't mean that he wants me to go into. I'm going to be killed. This guy is crazy. He's crazy. Don't think they, they show him like in the movies, he's a handsome guy. He was a shaman, probably the size of two tables. He was a conqueror. He had millions of servants, whatever. The guy used to drink for hundreds of people in a party, the Gemara says. His great grand, uh, Belshazzar, used to drink for a hundred people. What a hundred people drink, used to drink wine. See, oh you know how much fat alcohol packs? A lot. <laughs> Ahasuerus was big. Don't think he was some kind of handsome stud. He was a Rasha Marusha, Shaman, Rasha. Zevr Shabazz Valim. 
Imagine what the most tzaddikid girl had to go through. Esther Malka. She says, I can't go in. She says, listen, if you don't go in, you're going to die and somebody else is going to be the savior. You know what she says to him? You know what? Okay, I'm going to go. Kasher avadeti, avadeti. If I will die, I will die. But you know what? At least make me some preparation. Take all the Jews, fast for three days and three nights. And I'll go in. You know when those three days and three nights fell in? Lel Lel Haseder. On the night of the Seder it fell. You know they found on the Hamas terrorists that this whole plan was supposed to be on the night of Pesach last year. But from the upper things, wait, don't do it yet. Yeah, you could guys could uh, search that. It was supposed to be Balela Seder, this whole thing. They were gonna wait for everybody's in their house, everybody's eating, Lela Seder, and come and break through. For some reason, six months ago, they said we're, we're, from the higher ups, the mitzvot overcame the thing, something went into the board, they postponed it. There was one big tzaddik that passed away, and his, and his mother was crying in the device. If I only dive in stronger in Eila. Wow. If I only used my own kipper better. Yes. What did Esther do? She said, gather the Jews fast for me for three days. Not anybody. Everybody. Men, women, children. You're two years old fasting for three days. Is that possible? Because the big business was... I'm going to tell you something. I'm telling you right now. You're right now living in a historic time. Whatever anybody's gonna tell you is a lie. Now, the sad thing is that we're so vo- there's so much Torah in this generation. I don't wanna swear, I, I study Jewish history, I teach Jewish history. This generation has the most Torah being learned since the time of Chizkiyahu HaMelech and probably from the time of Moshe Rabbeinu. Without any guzma, without any uh, exaggeration. I'm not exaggerating to you. There are hundreds of thousands of Jews learning Torah as we speak. The Torah in the internet, the Torah being taught, people listening to Torah. So much Torah being being spread. But as much as Torah is being spread, we're still missing that Mordechai at Tzadik. Since the time of the Rishonim, we're missing that Mordechai at Tzadik. You know, the Rambam took on by himself all of the secular Egyptian Jewry by himself. That was a leader. That was a leader. You know, in 1992, La Havdil, La Havdil, there was a pogrom against the Koreans in California. They just, they just, uh, the whites went against them in California. You know what the police did? There are just too many of them. We can't, we can't do anything. They killed, maimed, by that. It is what it is. You don't guys don't understand one thing, what's holding all the klipot. We're across the street from one. And two blocks away from the big klipa. That's the real klipa, by the way. The, that's, the, that's, that's, the, that's the one that's ruling everything, by the way. He's the one in charge of everything over here. We're just two blocks away. We, the Gemara says if there isn't a zikhut, every day they're going to come and, and, and grab us. In France, some guy just walks into a Jewish woman thing, Amazon delivery, comes in, stabs her twice, puts a swastika on her door, and Shalom Ali said. What's stopping over here? I have somebody that I know, they got an Amazon delivery, and they saw their name, Jews. Are you Israeli? He said to him. So the person said, yes, I'm Israeli. You are Palestinian. Watch yourself. Last week. Amazon delivery service. Oh, what, what, what happened? What, what, what's going on? Palestinian? Yeah, Palestinian. Amazon delivery service. Hey, Palestinian. Yeah. It's the Amazon delivery guy. Oh, you said I'm a Palestinian. Yeah, I'm a Palestinian. You better watch yourself. You know what kind of zuchuyot we need? Rabbi said, we're, we're, uh, I, we're not Nevi'im. We're not B'nai Nevi'im. But I know one thing. The year 1948, 1967, Six-Day War, and the year 1974, the Yom Kippur War, and the year 2024, all fall out in the same leap year. Every leap year is three years. Every three years in Jewish, in the Jewish There's only every 19 or so years that the leap year falls every two years. That's this year. Now, we will 
merit to see miracles. But will we merit to be written in that book to survive to see those miracles? It's not a given, Rabbi Isai. It's not a given. Don't think you give tzedakot, you give this, you give that, you're good. It says in the Torah, when Abraham found out, you know, we, we, last, last week's parasha, it says over there, that Sarah tells, Sarah Imenu tells Abraham, kick out Yishmael. Kick him out. What does the Pasuk say? Inez, anybody remember? What does it say? When, it, when Sarah says to Abraham, kick out Yishmael. What, is, what happens to Abraham? Huh? What does he do? It's hot. What does he say? He got sent. Hmm? Why? What, what does it say? What does the Pasuk say? He became, he, it was tough. He didn't want to kick him out. So what's it? It's a son. That's a pshat. Anybody know what Rashi says over there in that Pasuk? How come he says he was upset? Abraham was upset. Pshat is he was upset because he has to kick out of his son out of his house. But what does Rashi say is the reason he was upset? Because he gave everything to the problem. No. Because, because the fact that Sarah says something? Because his wife says something. Like, Who yeah. the fuck you think you are? No. I think he had no idea huh? that he's going to be, uh, that he wanted to stay, yeah. keep him at home. That he what? Had, what? Maybe he had an idea that he was going to be. He didn't have no idea. Maybe he had high hopes. He had high, high, high hopes for him. You're touching on something. He was disappointed, <laughs> says Rashi, that he got off the derech. Oh, That's why he was upset, Abraham. That's what Rashi says. He wasn't upset that he had to kick him out. He was upset how out of my chenach did such a miflitzet come out. That's what Rashi, look, open Rashi over there in Parashat Vayera. Look at the Rashi. That's why Rashi says when he sent him off, you know how rich Abraham was? Well, all he afforded to give him was a piece of bread and a, a water cooler. <laughs> That's what he said he sent him with, a piece of bread and a water cooler. Avram said, this kid, I'm going to get, that's what Rashi says, I'm going to give him money? He went off the derech? Then I the Zara? He fought over inheritance? That's what I grew in my house? Get out of here. He didn't go against Sarah. He couldn't understand how he lost his son. So when God told him, when he said, you're going to have a kid, he says, you're going to have a kid, you're going to call him Yitzchak. But he says, what about uh, Ishmael? What about him? Hashem says, don't worry, I heard you about him. <coughs> and Avram says, will he not live? What does that mean, will he not live? Will he not do teshuva? So Hashem says, don't worry. He'll do teshuva. And what does this say in this week's parasha? When Abraham passes away, Yitzchak comes to bury him. And Yishmael is there too. But Abraham has six more sons. Where do they go? They went... They went... They, they, they were gone. They were done. Yeah, he had six more sons from Keturah. He had a third wife afterwards. Keturah. And he says, they didn't come. But Yishmael came. And Yishmael said to Yitzchak, you first. You're the Ben Hagvira. By Esav, we don't see that. The Kritmachs. By Esav, we don't see that. When Esav, when Yaakov died, when Yitzchak died, what does it say? And Esau came to bury him. Esau was still denying the fact that he sold his firstborn right. He still denied. He said, what? For a bowl of lentils? He said, batel b'shishim. It's all, it's all butter. I was, I was sakanat nefashot. I wasn't hungry. It was sakanat nefashot. But Yishmael gave in. What does Rashi say? Yishmael does teshuva. He does teshuva. So we're living in a time where we're mamish seeing the prophecies come true. On one hand, we see the Abraham Accords, the Emirates, Bahrain, Saudi Arabia shooting down a missile that was supposed to go to Elad. We see a tshuva from the side of Ishmael. But at the same time, we see the Pere Adam at the same time. Who's going to win? The Pere Adam or the tshuva part of Ishmael? We know Ishmael does tshuva. He's the only one of the Ummah that has Hashem's name inside of him, Ishmael. Does he do tshuva, yes or no? Yes. On one hand, we see Turkey. He says, 
They're freedom fighters. And we see Jordan says, if you're going to mess with them more, we're going to full war against us too. Egypt says, we're not going to work with you guys. But listen, we see, we see the guys on the other side say, listen, we, we don't want to get involved. There is a dual, dual uh, characteristic to Ishmael. He's a pere and he's an Adam. He's a pere and he's an Adam. He's pere. What's pere? He's a wild man. He's not, he's, like, he's, like, he's, he's, he's not a human. He's not an animal. He's something in the middle over there. He's a quasi something. Rav Chaim Vital says, the last galut is not Esav. It's Ishmael. The last galut is Yishmael. What Yishmael? What's Yishmael's name? Yishma. What's Yishma mean? He will listen. El Hashem will listen. What will he listen to? He will cause such distress for Kala Yisrael. A Kala Yisrael will yell out the Yishmael, and God will listen to the voices of Am, Am Yisrael. What's the difference between Yishmael and Israel? It's only a couple of numbers between them. Only a couple of numbers. This one believes in Hashem. This one believes in Hashem. Where is the truth? This one does hakafot around his Kaaba. Ooh. And this one does hakafot and Simchat Torah. When do they attack us? When we do our hakafot. <laughs> you know what they do in their Kaaba, right? In, their, in Mecca. <laughs> What's their mean hag over there? They all wear white. Yeah, they go around. They all, they all must wear white. <laughs> yeah, That's oh, their halakha. <laughs> and they do seven. Seven. Oh, for real? Yeah, seven hakafot they do. Wow. I, okay. Let me and, uh, and when did they attack us? On the day that we're all Levanim, after the day of the Yom Kippur. And we all do Hakafot. How many Hakafot? Seven Hakafot. Who's the real one by? Is it them or them? Where is the truth by? We see Ishmael. It says over here. Ishmael ben Abraham. These are the generations of Ishmael. Ishmael has how many sons? Twelve. Twelve. Yeah. How many sons Yaakov has? Whoa. Twelve! Anti, it says over here. Where did they live? From Chavila Atshur, the Saudi Arabia, the Arabian Peninsula. He fell on all of his brother's faces. What does that mean? He fell on all of his brother's faces, Ishmael. It says Balaturim. Nafal, he fell on all of... The word doesn't make sense. The sentence makes absolutely no sense. What does it mean? He fell on all of his brother's faces. Al pnei kol echav, nafal. What's nafal? He fell. Says the Balaturim. What's another name for Mashiach? Bar nafle. The son of the fallen, a fallen one. What do we call Mashiach? Takim et sukat David hanofelit. So says the Balaturim. When Yishmael falls. David HaMelech goes up. When Yishmael goes up, Chas V'Shalom, vice versa, Chas V'Shalom. So the last Galut, says Rabbi Chaim Vital, is Yishmael. He's the horn that, that, that Daniel sees, that opens his mouth and starts to speak. Allah Akbar, Hashem is great, Hashem is great, Hashem is great. Now what's the difference? So we're in a Sakana. What's my point over here? We're in a Sakana. We're also at a, we're at a crossroad. Anybody who tells you differently is wrong. I'm not a Navi. They're also not Nevi'im. That's the difference. It, back in the day, there was Nevi'im and regular folk. Chachamim and Nevi'im. Today, everybody's on the same level. There's no Nevi'im. I'm going to tell you one thing. And it's a shame. Sometimes I think about it during the day. Where is the Gidolei Ador? Chaim Kanevsky. Everybody passed away. It's, it's, it's mom. But there's mamish. Nobody's saying anything. And we're living in such a pivotal point. We don't know where to go. But I'm telling you, there's some silver lining in our generation. Why? I'll tell you why. I was thinking about it. In the Holocaust, in the Spanish Inquisition, Sfaradim were separate and Ashkenazim were separate. They did their thing and they suffered theirs and they did their thing, they suffered. And our generation is different. We're all mixed together. Whatever this one make, does, this one makes up for. Whatever this one is messing up in, this one is making up for it. I'm going to tell you something right now. Yishmael lived for how many years? How old was he when he died? Anybody know? 137. 137. Excellent work. 137. Yishmael was. 
Says the Rav Chaim Vital, 137 is the Gematria of Kabbalah. The secrets of the Torah. Says Rabbi Chaim Vital, and this is something you're not going to hear anywhere. Everybody's reading Tehili, Rabbi said we have to get together. Uh, I'm thinking of doing, remind me where I was at. I was thinking of doing this Friday at Ta'anit. Shabbat comes in at what, like 4.30? Yeah? 4.30. I want to do this Friday. Now I know for some people Friday is very tough or Sunday. What's better guys? Friday or Sunday at Ta'anit? Huh? Anybody? Huh? Friday. 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 I, I prefer Friday to do a Ta'anit. Ta'anit. But Friday. not for Tikkun Avrit. Ta'anit. I want to do to destroy the power of Yishmael. Tikkun Avon Nida. They're also Friday. They're also Friday. I want to destroy them on their day. The Koach of their days on a Friday. I want to do on this Friday Tikkun Avon Nida. Nida. This Friday I want to do Tikkun. From the morning, morning is what? Uh, 6 o'clock till Kiddush 4.30. We're going to do a Tikkun for Nida. And I don't want to do one of them. I want to do a couple of them. Rabbi said we have to get together. We do have to asifah. We have to make a difference. Rabbi Avigdor Miller says in Europe, pre-1930, we have to do tikkunim. We must do tikkunim. I'm not a Navi. I'm not a Ben Navi. But I call Am Yisrael Bleniviim him. Either we do something to change it, or either it's just going to continue to getting worse until some, something is going to happen in our thing, and we're all going to wake up. No city council member is going to help us. No governor is going to help us. Oh you know Hitler was first... Who put him into power? The Jews. The Jews. Yeah. yeah, their own. The Jews put him into power. He was a nationalist. He was pro-Germany. He was a socialist. What does Nazis stand for? National Socialist Party. He was... And they, and they supported him in the beginning. And then they went against him. Then they rode against him. And he got even angrier at the Jews. You understand? Anyways, I don't want to get into history over here. I want to do a tikkun. Rabbi Isai. And we do teshuva. Right now, Hashem is doing... You know, there are stories that happen in the Teva. A guy was in a bathroom. In a bathroom hiding in the party. He was crying to Hashem. He said, Hashem, I kept two Shabbats. Save me, he said Hashem. Save me, he said. And he will say, another person, another woman, they were about to shoot, Hashem, I take upon myself, Shemir and Shabbat, she was saved. Mm -hmm. We're seeing right now, Midah can make it Midah. Everybody has to take upon himself mitzvot right now. Don't say you're Naki. You're not Naki, Rabbi Yisrael. You're not Naki, especially B'Shemirat Ha'inayim. Especially B'Einayim, B'Brit. Anything that has to do with Kiddusha. But what I want to say, Rabbi Chaim Vital said, he says, there are three levels of Jewish people. One is the Amah Aretz. If you look at the Etzah Hayim, you can see it by yourself over here. If anybody knows how to read. The second level is people who learn Torah, but they don't have any pneumute inside the Torah. The Torah is darkness. And the third level is Mare Asod, Balei Kabbalah. Because even the Balei Kabbalah is in the dark. Even they're in the dark. But at least they try to find the light. You know, Rabbi Rabban Yochan ben Zakkai had five students. Five. Rabbi Eliezer HaGadol. Rabbi Yoshua. Rabbi Yosei HaKohen. Rabban Shimon ben Netanel. And who was the fifth one? Rabbi Azar ben Arach. Thank you very much. Rabbi Azar ben Arach was stronger than all the four students put together. You know what was his strength? When he used to sit in Bidoresh with Maaseh HaMerkava. When he would say Torah Ta'ari. And suddenly rainbows would be flying in the air and angels would come down to listen to him. Rabbi said, only Pneumut Torah is going to save us. We don't believe in ourselves, but I promise you, Rabbi Isai. Sometimes I have to tell this to myself too. As long as we're learning this thing, nobody can touch us. This does the Biurei Nitzotzot. If you guys take upon yourself every time you dive in Shmona Yisrael, when you say Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echad, in the word Echad, when you say... At least these two places, twice a day, to pick up the Rapach Nitzotzot that I taught you guys this three weeks ago. And I don't think I see enough, I don't see people doing this. At least twice a day to do this Kavana. At least twice a day. 
Hashem, when he says, at least in the mind, Hashem, Hashem Echad, I'm picking up the Rapach Mitzvot right now. And you have that Kavanah in that wall over there, and we have it in our, in our Paruchet and Yom Kippur Rosh Hashanah. Just twice a day, Rabbi, I promise you're going to change the direction everything is going over here. Who was Avraham's enemy at the end of last week's parasha? Avi Melech Melech Plishtim. Who's Yitzchak's enemy in next week's parasha? Avi Melech Melech Plishtim, the king of Aza. Who is the um, king of Aza? Y- David Amelech couldn't conquer Aza. All the thing is hitting inside Aza. What's Aza? 77. 77. Mazab. Yeah, Mazab. He's hitting the Mazab. They, they. What's the Mazal, the beer, the Kedusha, the Tahara? Rabbi Isai. Now, don't run away. After this, I'm going to do again the Tikkun review, the Ftai, the, the Davani. I, we said a lot of ideas here tonight. There's a lot of stuff we could do, Rabbi Isai. We got to take upon ourselves mitzvot. We got to do Asifot. I want to make an Asifah here one time a week. I don't know when. Asifah, gathering, women, children. We're going to say Tilim, everybody together. We got to do something. It's not enough to give tzedakah. It's not enough. It's not enough. Many people are giving tzedakah. We must change. If it's tzitzit, if it's tefillin, if it's brachot, if it's shmirat shabbat. I think everything in this, in this whole story is shmirat shabbat. I don't know. I, this, is, this, is what, this is the feeling I got from all of this. Everything is shabbat this year. Shabbat, 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 shabbat. Everything is shabbat. To be mechazek b'shmirat shabbat. B'tzniyut. B'tzniyut. That's already something, well, for men too, but mostly for women. Mm-hmm. For marriage, everything. Everything has to be done. The Rambam says, all the mitzvot that we have is 248. How many do we have in our days? Only 60. And some only go to Kohanim, some only go to... How many or many mitzvot do you have left to do in this week, in this, in this generation? There was a story I'm going to end with here in the Tevach, in the, the great pogrom and slaughter. And we never heard such a thing from the years of 1608, 1609, in the time of the Chambaneski pogroms. One woman was, she was in one of the kibbutzim. And she was about to be with her kids slaughtered when they were brought back to the room of the Mamad. Mamad is the, uh, the, the panic room. And they were going to, they had RPGs. You know what an RPG is? There were the small rockets, and they were about to blast through the door. She tells all the kids to their kids. She says, kids, they were young kids, six, seven, eight years. Guys, forgive one another. Chilonia. <laughs> Just forgive one another. Just say, I forgive you, you forgive me. Take upon yourself to forgive anybody that did anything wrong to you in your life. <laughs> and they all said, we forgive everybody. And the terrorist saw he couldn't open the door. He had the RPG turned around. Not sure. The boy said, it's mamash HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Yeah, there's a lot of questions, isn't it? But mamash, we see Yad Hashem. Even a small thing to forgive somebody that do something wrong in your life. And there's people who did us wrong. And B'Tzedek were angry at them. B'Tzedek. What Elohei Ha'ez Lo Yaseh Mishpat. But if you forgive, Hashem will forgive you too. B'Zat Hashem Yitbach, my Hashem bless all of us here. May we be saved from Chev Mashiach. May we be saved from Chev Le Gog Magog. May we be zoche le Biyad Goel Tzedek. May we be zoche to join the Binyan Beit Hamidah Shoshel Ishi. May we be zoche to 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 be